feeling right now? Unbelievable. It's uh, extremely surreal. Um, I always envisioned uh, having a fight like that, you know, a complete war coming down to the wire, bringing out the best of me. And it just, it was the best way it could possibly go for the belt against a legend like that. I was a big underdog. A few people believed in me, just me, my team, my family, and we did it. We did it. You said beforehand, uh, when we spoke before the fight, that this would be kind of your life's work. Um, how does it feel, you know, now holding the Benetton belt? <sighs> um, it's hard to put into words. Um, it really is my life's work. And everybody that's had the, the biggest piece of my life um, was all here, present, you know, as far as all my teachers, my coaches, my closest, my closest uh, family and brothers. Just a couple were missing here and there, but, um, you know, I, I just, I dreamed of it happening this way. And uh, I, I was telling myself backstage that this would be my masterpiece, you know. Um, the the greatest expression, the greatest showing of, of who I am. And it was, uh, you know, I had to dig deep. There were some tough moments in there, um, but that's how it's supposed to be. That's how it should be, you know? Uh, I wish I could have done better in some things, but uh, <laughs> that was Musasi. That was Musasi, so it's crazy. And of course he's, uh, sorry. Of course, he's been, you know, a champion in, in different division, uh, different um, organizations. You know, he's been, a, you know, he's been around the game for a long time. So, what does it mean to be able to, you know, take him into deep waters and, and to come out the champion? Like I said, uh, I dreamed of having that, like, kind of rocky fight, you know, like, uh, like a movie. Um, and I needed someone like that to to push me that way. Um, there was definitely, you know, like a couple moments like where I was like, oh, I'm already a little tired, you know, and uh, my conditioning is one of my greatest attributes. So I really had to dig deep going into that fifth round. I, I, I knew that I needed that round. Um, you know, uh, it was it was so close and I just kept telling myself, you know, one more takedown. Obviously, I wanted to get the finish like there was some positions that I lost, some areas where it's running through my mind right now nonstop. Um, you know, I thought I could have capitalized a little better, but he's he's so experienced. He's so, you know, he doesn't make a lot of mistakes. And even when he makes a mistake, he, he's really good at not letting it get any worse, you know, um, and, and always staying in the fight. So he was, he was a, you know, a, a veteran um, and he is a great champion. I have so much respect for him. He didn't need to take this fight, you know. Um, it's only my tenth fight, and uh, you know he could have saved for saved himself for like bigger fights, you know, bigger paydays, champ, champ, or whatever type kind of fights, uh, and really call his his shots. Um, but he, you know, as a true champion, wanted to put his belt like, on the line against uh, who he felt was the the most deserving contender. And after my victory over Salter, you know he put my name out there. He really, you know, made this happen, uh, this opportunity for me. So, uh, so much respect for him, and it was an honor, an honor to fight him. Were you surprised that you could take him down so easily in the first round? <laughs> I've trained so hard for this. No, I mean, it, it, it wasn't more of a question of like if I would be able to take him down. It was more like, you know, um, how cleanly I could get in there and, uh, you know, uh, make him uncomfortable on the feet and sort of neutralize his stand-up game. Um, I felt like I was doing a good job slipping most of his, his one-twos. Um, but then once I got cut, his jab started to land a little bit. I couldn't see as well there. And then there was one time when I, when I did get hurt, he, he poked me on my, on my eye uh, where I was cut. And then uh, some punch came after that. I don't remember what it was. Um, but uh, until the cut, I felt like I was, um, you know, doing okay with not letting him get off comfortably. Um, but he did impress me with his jujitsu, with his butterfly, uh, his guard retention, and uh, he controlled my wrist well. 
when I had good positions to look for the finishes. Um, but, you know, I, I didn't expect it to be easy by any means. So, Raphael, you've, uh, you've made a long journey from Oklahoma over to London uh, to prepare for this fight. You know, what does it mean to come into quite a hostile arena tonight? Obviously, there was a lot of Sassy chance. Mm -hmm. Sassy had a large following here. What was it? What was it like dealing with that walking to the cage? <laughs> That's been my whole life. I'm from Oklahoma. <laughs> uh, tell me what big events are, are there? You know, where I get to be the you know the, the hometown guy. Um, as soon as I walked in and I heard everybody cheering, like, and I, I could feel the energy for him, it just took me right back to being a kid in Brazil, competing in Brazil my whole life in jiu-jitsu, everyone always being against me. Um, you know, it, it just kind of put a smile on my face because it put my whole life in perspective one more time. This is what I was made to do. I was completely ready for this moment. Um, I knew, you know, I, I had some jiu-jitsu fans out there, you know, uh, there was, there is some Europeans in my corner tonight for sure, but um, uh, you know he was definitely the favorite, and that also had to do with the other Dutch fighters that were on the card. So there was a big Dutch community here. But uh, for me, it's no hard feelings. Like it's it's business, and uh, it just gave a little f more fuel to the fire for sure. And would you like to win at your first events back over here in Europe? Not the Euros Euros Man, Euros I want the biggest arenas, the biggest fights. It's time to to capitalize and uh, just enjoy this ride, keep this belt as long as possible and, and you know, take my family all over the world, let's do it, let's enjoy, biggest ones possible. You've been on the mats with some of the best grapplers on the planet um, and you know, the, the, the best guys know how to stall and how to prevent you from getting that finish. How impressed were you with Gegard's grappling on this, especially in that last round where mm -hmm. you had him down for virtually the full, the full mm -hmm. duration of that, that final round? There was a little fatigue involved in there as well, uh, but uh, you know the gloves. The gloves make it hard. Um, and you can get a really good control of the wrists on the gloves, um, so it's hard to to sink in the chokes. Um, you know, I, I I I train with so many great guys. Like, it it's not that you know I was surprised by any means because I'm already used to feeling you know uh, high level jujitsu guys. Um, High-level MMA guys. I know the, how they react, and uh, and so it was just it was just another hard practice day, really. You know, I mean that's it. Like, yeah, I got hit in the in the face a little bit more than what I would like, but you know, in Curitiba, Brazil, where I go to for my training camps, like that was was a normal day, basically. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just just totally prepared. Um, I was very impressed by his jujitsu. Um, you know, it would have been nice if we could have had like a 10 minute round. I could have a little more time, you know, like, like a Japan style. Um, but, um, you know, when there's a clock and you only have to kind of survive and you can hold wrists and things like that, the other person is more likely to make some mistakes because they get a little anxious and I definitely felt that. Um, but it's a great experience, you know, and I'm just going to do that much better from here on out. You're um, a champion, you know, in multiple Brazilian, Brazilian jiu-jitsu competitions and all sorts of jiu-jitsu competitions. So you won titles, um, won medals in that. Now you're the MMA champion as well. Um, what's next? You know, is this is this your legacy? You know, you've, you've done what you, you went out to do, or have you got any something else planned? Right now, the mission is to keep this thing over my shoulder and around my waist um, for as long as possible. And for sure, this is how I'm. I'm riding out into the sunset. Um, you know, like I said, uh, we've we've worked our whole lives for this, and uh, you know, so I want to keep enjoying the moment, keep um, taking the momentum even further, and uh, having as many big fights as possible. Um, but this will be how I, I end my professional career. Uh, will be in MMA, and then after that, I'm just going to be, uh, you know, doing the the old man. Jiu-Jitsu divisions, uh, still competing for as long as I possibly can, and uh, you know, start a family and and just enjoy life and and yeah, that's it. Start enjoying, man. You're the champion. Yeah. Now. yeah Vacation on Monday. <laughs> Where does this rank in terms of your career achievements? You know, you won so many tournaments as a as a grappler. You've now switched sports or transitioned into mixed martial arts, which obviously 
you know, there's, there's an awful lot of new tools to learn in order to get to the top of that sport. You've done that, you've achieved that, you've got the evidence on your shoulder right now. So where does this rank in terms of your, your, all, your, all your championships and achievements as an athlete? Uh, you know, you can't put a rank on it because at every point in time in your life, that is the biggest thing for you, you know? Um, when I won the Black Belt World Championship, you know, I was 24 years old. And for me, that was the greatest moment of my life. And I had other moments that were like, kind of like the greatest moments of my life after that. Um, this is, you know, just another one of those I get to cherish forever. Um, I, for me, this is definitely a little extra special because jujitsu is just one portion of my life as a martial artist. Um, and people forget about that or they just don't, they don't know, you know what I mean? The ones close to me really know. Um, my whole life has been martial arts and this, you know, I'm not just a jujitsu guy. I'm not just a fighter. You know, I really don't even like to be called a fighter. I'm a martial artist, and um, and you know, all my teachers, everybody that I represent, was with me tonight, and I got to, you know, carry all that into the into the cage um, for this special moment. So uh, it's hard to say what's what ranks higher, but for me, like um, this has a a little extra icing on the cake, a little extra sweetness to it because it is a culmination of everything I've ever done in my whole life. So this is about as good as it gets. Would you get Musashi a immediate rematch? Would you get him an immediate rematch? You know, if that's what they want to do, I can't blame him. It was a extremely close fight and he is Musashi. Uh, right now, you know, it's hard to think about that. Like uh, this was a seven month training camp. You know what I mean? I grinded so hard um, this year and uh, uh, you know, I'm gonna rest a little bit tomorrow on Monday. I'm off to Spain with my my love, uh, wherever she is over there, and uh, and it's time to you know sit by the pool, the beach, chill, relax, enjoy. I'm going to Madrid with my parents, and it's two weeks in Spain, and then we we'll come back home, you know, heal these wounds a little more, and get back to work, and you know, start thinking about the defense for sure.